Hi, Ruby Lane. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to part two of Paper Machets with Chris Madrid. Chris, in part two, we, we see, you know, a basic concept of a doll. But then I noticed that we have dolls with glass eyes and with painted eyes. What you know, on the table is the most unusual eye um, placement that you have, do you think? Oh, well, that's easy. This doll here, who is an amazing little girl, this is a Voigt, and in, I think it was 1841, um, this Frang invented flirty-eyed, and as far as we know, Voigt is the only one. He must have had some kind of deal with them, and her eyes flirt. Oh, oh that's just incredible. Wow. Now you do see these in, with this hairstyle, there's a longer, with the long curls, there's a lady doll with these, but this child doll is just amazing. And amazing. that was really way ahead of the time. Yeah, yeah, as a, of, yeah. Of, of, of anyone else doing that, because I, I know that having, you know, w having to have had yeah, repair yeah. dolls, the, that mechanism is very complicated. I know, and, and to get it, it in take, here. And to get it in the head. Do you think there's a possibility that they had the mold in two parts, did the eyes, and then joined yes. the heads? Yeah, I think that's, I, I'm sure they it would seem to. How would you get, how would you do that? I, I mean, mean, you could do it, but it would be so time consuming. I know, and they do, you know, they're, they do exist, they're, they're not common. Um, Winnie Langley. She had a nice collection. She had a nice collection, and she had so like seven of these. Uh, John D Darcy Noble did a, an article, and when she passed, these they came to market. And you're thinking, oh, there's a lot of these, but no, they get absorbed. They up get absorbed, into the and very, very seldom do these come up. And I think that here, the patina, which we've got this kind of alligatored finish, yes. it's almost like a, a painting that has an alligator yeah. finish to it. If you can relax yourself and think of this really as art, then you can accept it in, a, in a, a flat painting, but we should be able to accept it, I know you have, in three-dimensional form. Um, and this, this doll has the cuddly factor, too, yes. of the cloth body. And she's a cloth feed. She's a wonderful doll. Yeah. But once again, if you are not someone who can except imperfections in dolls, you would pass this up. And this doll is rare. I we've mean, had in, in our career, which we've had thousands and thousands of dolls, I think we've had two flirty eye paper machets. Yeah. And they, they go like very quick. They just, yeah. Have you ever seen, this seems to me, and maybe you could fill this in, this seems to be about the starting point size-wise. Yeah. We don't usually see this smaller. No, you and they might get see, bigger. Yes, you might see uh, flirty eye in thirty-two, but you'll never. I I don't believe that there are any ones that are smaller than this yeah. because I I just think that. And of course, on Ruby Lane, the, the the audience will let us know. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they'll school us. Yeah, <laughs> which is great, by the way. Yes, you know because we're we always, have to we learn. Love yes. And yes, someone may have something in their. Um, collection that that but it, it seems to me from what I've observed that they're usually on the larger side getting yes. larger and larger than this yeah and actually there's quite a few Voigt dolls that are quite large you know not that heavy that no she said that that one is a big girl and earlier for if the people that we talked about it we talked about it being um, the, the beginning of the French body that we would know for French fashion dolls here it is, but this is probably 1840. So, uh -huh. you know, basically this concept went on for a while. And uh, I mean, now, do you have this in your collection as a study group to show bodies, or are we in transitioning to getting we're, her clothes at we're, some point? We're transition. Well, she had on clothes, but the clothes she had on were not really. They were pretty, but yeah. they weren't. So, they weren't and I correct. thought that this, particularly this pink, because you can see that this is pink and that is mm. one of the clues for Voigt is that they have these wonderful fashion style pink bodies. Yeah, and it so, just fades over time. And, and she just... has a she has a twin that um, needs a haircut. <laughs> Someone in the seventies 
decided to help out and see there's a slit here and they decided to put hair in but they put hair, hair. like from a from, from a, a storybook doll yeah yeah oh, so no. it's yeah so i i cut this but then it started to break it so i just gave her like a little tiny mohawk and if i can figure out how to get that out of there we'll have a care yeah. a hair care day yeah that would be we'll lovely but isn't it i mean this is a great size and this body is really well proportioned and she's a real sweetheart and like i said having two of these the same size is really fun it had a a note with it from someone from the 70s who was trying who also dressed her in polyester which was lovely too that great designer polyester <laughs> that's <laughs> right that's right it said, these were the barbies of that era and yeah. actually they probably were they were but yeah. you know you know those polyester dresses we can bury them in eight thousand years <laughs> they'll come out of the ground just perfect <laughs> um we were touched on eye color or eyes, and yet I see blue eyes, blue eyes, blue eyes, and then we get over here into some brown eyes. Yes. So, in your, do you think that the, what is rarer in your opinion, brown eyes or blue eyes? Brown. Brown. I believe that yeah, the brown eyes are blue are are more rare. Um, this one, I, I have no idea who the manufacturer of her is. She's very light. But you also find that after the 18, 18, 18, 20, the shoulder heads become very light. And the reason is Prussia um, uh, enacted customs and surtaxes on shipping. And so you wanted the doll heads, to the shoulder heads to be lighter because you paid less in taxes shipping them. But she's a wonderful little doll. But you know, it's interesting because her eyes don't have highlights a lot of them have the highlights like the with casters. the blue yeah and this one is just sort of flat but she's pretty do you think it could be i mean i see a lot of um similarities to other dolls and sonnenberg we know was the capital of the copycats yes that someone could have taken a mold and then absolutely um, done a kind of a less expensive version and uh, infringed on uh, someone else. I mean, that's been going on since the beginning of time. Oh, yeah. This um, could be a faux voigt or because there's so many, so many doll manufacturers in Sonnenberg that we just Because the paint don't know. is a little, just a little bit different. Yeah, I know. Or it could be very late in the game. Or yeah, she's got quite version. a chunky little neck here, too. Uh, she's cute, but the doll, you know, the body's not Primitive. It's very and primitive. And it could have also been just sold as a head. Yeah, too. it could be very and much mommy, mommy made. made the, yeah. The body. And um, um, I mean, that was a very common feature. Even my own great grandmother, when they came out to California, she took her own doll, China head, cut the head off the body, threw the body in the trash because she had the ability and the talent to make her doll another body. So why be. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a, a big deal to make a body. Yeah, so we think this might be a, might be a Kestner based upon the painting, but she, this also has brown eyes. This could very easily be a boy doll. with the But it could be a girl doll. Girl doll, because as we were talking, they had to cut their hair short a lot of times because of lice. And uh, so she could either be a boy or a girl, but she's very cute, all original. Um, and the dress really could be a boy or yes, a girl dress. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've done research, my in, and uh, I have, fortunately have some uh, clothes from my ancestors, and two of them are dresses that were for like Benjamin Winslow Harris. So they were, and yeah. they, you would think it was a girl's dress because it has flowers and it's very pretty, but no, it was, it was made well, for then, a boy. I mean, at, at one point in the history of the world, you know that little boys would get kidnapped and um, you know sent to workhouses or put on ships so you wanted to kind of keep your children where you couldn't tell whether they are, oh, were a boy right. or a girl that's really hmm. yes oh no that's what it was that what why oh. mm -hmm. so you wanted to have that like they couldn't you know the little kidnappers couldn't really tell wow hmm. should we look at you have a wonderful collection of milliner models right here the dolls that we call milliner models that within the, there's just a study group 
right there of you know different styles and the Apollo's knot and um, but this one I mean that's just as rare as hen's teeth with yes. glass eyes. I know, isn't she wonderful? Do we have any idea who made that? I don't. I wish I did. She has a very sweet face, very but elongated. You know, she she's very solemn. Some of these are actually more happy. I wish I knew who that doll was. That's one of the reasons why I think it's important to try to get some of the testing done to try to because. I just don't, uh, she's, one, she's an absolute beautiful doll. Her hair is amazing, the outfit's amazing. I mean, she's, she's just great. One thing I try to do for myself is I have, um, I collect, I have my little scrapbooks of things that I'm interested in. And if I find, say, like one Hiray dress that's pink with blue birds on it, and it's marked, I put that in my little file because eventually there may come another one that's, red, the same print, same style, and you kind of like start to, it's almost scientific, like, okay, we've got a pattern here. But I have not seen this one at all. No, I know. So I, that will be, a, but do we think these two are Kessners? I, I think this one is, but the other one I'm not sure. And you, you actually called that Rachel. I think that could be a, a Kessner. She's wonderful. Mm. All original. Um, a lot of people don't understand the colors of the shoulder plate and the paper. And that, that was their size. So that's how they, you know, they were very good about, um, if you look in their catalog, they're different colors yes. because they're different sizes. Oh. So blue is 10 inches, hmm. green is 17, what, what, however it works. So that is a size issue. That is so interesting. It really wow. is. Now, Chris, you have also a phenomenal group of hatted dolls. So should we put them all together so that sure. they show up as a study group? And by the way, this isn't all my hatted dolls. But <laughs> <laughs> and these are dolls with molded hats. Yes, that's kind of my like favorite a tangents. Yeah. But look at that. It's not only just the history of dolls themselves, but it's the history of hats. You know, yeah, and I head think, yeah, and you know what I love about these dolls is that, and we've talked about this, is that the dolls wear the hats the way they were supposed to be worn. You know, as history goes by, we have a hat, but we don't know uh, how it's supposed on the head. to be perched mm -hmm. on the head or whatever. And when you have these hatted dolls, it shows you exactly what they're supposed to look like. And I think that hats, I mean, people don't realize that uh, in up until not our lifetime, um, really lady, a lady did not leave the house without a hat on. Oh, yeah. It would have been just un unbelievable. But do we have any idea who made this one? Uh, uh, Dressel. Kuno Auto Dressel. Yeah, Kuno and they're the, one of the oldest doll making companies yeah. recorded. 1730s. Johan Dressel was already making dolls. And I think this is a Dressel also. That's also a Dressel. How, I, I, with, their, with those dolls, they do have sometimes marks on the body, don't they? They do, and actually, um, there's the helmet and the wind helmet. That, if, the, if it has that, then it means it's after 1875. So the little lady in front here, this, this she's one. also <coughs> Kuno Auto Dressel. I mean, she's got everything. She's got a hat. She's got a snood. She's got painted earrings. Oh, I know. She's, she's I mean, got a uh, whole fa Fabulous shoes. And she has a marked body. So she is. And I think the audience would like to know. So just say a doll like this. What would, what would one have to pay for that today? I think I paid $2,200 for her. So that's a really super rare doll. For 2200 Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of dolls that are priced 2200 that are not super oh, rare. No. Oops. No. She's on a saddle. You'll have to help me there. <laughs> but the thing, too, that you have that collectors who don't have a lot of money, who can't be buying Hirays and Brews, you can collect very interesting, very unusual, very rare dolls when you collect in this arena. And it's not going to break the bank. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them, yes, are more expensive than others. But 
um, you get some wonderful dolls. And, it's, and historic dolls. Yes. Really that are have a history and I mean, some of the, the these are two hundred. Some of them are two hundred year old dolls. I know. And that's know. kind of if you think about it, that's pretty amazing. Um, let's talk about this little this this little survivor. I mean, that is a, a cute doll that I think that a lot of our viewers don't realize up until the Oscar Wilde trials that dolls were marketed to little boys mm -hmm. but the problem with little boys is little boys do things like blow up their doll and drown them and play war but this probably was owned by a little boy don't you yes. think yes it's interesting um when it, back to the dough when they were making the dolls from dough they had a uh, guild and to prove your um, expertise you had to be able to make a girl doll in the latest fashion, but you also had to make a soldier. Oh, wow. Yeah, a grenadier with a grenade. Wow. Yeah, so that was one of the tasks that you needed to show proficiency. So just by that, you know that boy dolls were just 99% were yeah. destroyed. Yeah, because, you know, boys well, played I mean, differently. Well, in my era, the G.I. Joe doll, and those are very, very durable, but we managed to use firecrackers and destroy them and you know, chew on them and run yeah. them over with the car yeah. or whatever we... <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, and then this little cutie with that wonderful face. I mean, that's almost like a character doll. Isn't she pretty? Just, uh, you know, very, very lifelike. Do we have any idea who made her? I don't. I wish I Because I don't, I don't yeah. have any... Um, I see similarities in her to other dolls this one i've never seen one that i could say oh that's the same manufacturer and look at the curls but going she down has back. some similarities oh. speaking of boy dolls to this little guy over here who uh that's fantastic clothing that um completely dressed he's got little oil cloth boots i think he has some similarities not a lot though because her eyes are more almond um but mm -hmm. you can very much see it yeah but he's got a wonderful outfit i'm sure this was made for a little boy it's got the sword i mean you could just see that oh whack, yes whacking all the girl dolls yes the sword. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the sister was probably really now annoying. at the end i mean you've got a a, a nice chronological group of um, paper machés, but here now we're towards the end of the um, story of paper machés, and yet these, I think, are very much kind of like Americana. Yes. Yeah, they that, that they were the type of dolls that, you know, the people that built this country would have um, uh, played with. Who are the makers of these? This is actual Kuno and Dressel. Oh, okay. Both of them. Okay. Um, so that you can see the progression. I mean, they're still producing quality dolls. These oh, yeah. Dolls really and the wonderful. eyes are beautiful in that This doll. little girl has a wardrobe. She looks very special to someone. She has four, uh, 14 dresses. She has hats and gloves and just a, and she's a perfect size for that. Oh, I yes. Mean, she's just amazing. She has dresses with soutache and she's wonderful. It's the size of, doll, of a doll, too, that it's small enough that it wouldn't have been at some point by collectors or dealers robbed of its clothes right. to go to say a, a bigger doll that I mean this is really probably what 12 inches tall yeah she's or very so. 11 and a so. half I think she is and then the other one behind her she is a, a probably later much later Kuno Dressel she's got but the beautiful body. beautiful face mm -hmm. her, you know her painting is it's a beautiful a face sweet girl no, it's a wonderful piece. And these, you know, the, the particularly the later um, paper machés are very affordable. There's the Superior, which are very sweet. And sometimes that they have superior clothes. Yeah. Because the, the, the needlework on the cottons oh gosh, and things yeah. are just fantastic. Well, Chris, I want to thank you on behalf of the Grovian for coming and bringing all these things and sharing them with us. 
And thank you, Ruby Lane. Yes, thank for you, Ruby Lane. Us. Thank you and for uh, allowing us to be here. And we'll it's be back amazing. a little later with Daisy. A little dollop of Daisy. Thank yeah. you again, Chris. Okay. Thank You're you, welcome. Michael. Bye-bye.